Hi party people, it's Lucky with BP Fun, and today I'm doing a review on Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. Spoiler warning for those of you who haven't seen it and would like to see it, we're going to be going over everything. If you do not care or you've already seen it, stick around. If not, go check out some of our other videos. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more nerdy content just like this. So, Aquaman The Lost Kingdom kingdom it needs to stay lost so to kick things off we see the events that take place right after the first aquaman film it seems as though jason momoa's aquaman has had his first trial along with his co-star amber heard yep i said it amber heard is in the second film she is only in around 13 scenes and she has about eight lines in this movie and it does not do it justice whatsoever it feels like, especially early on when they're doing the montage with the child and it's Aquaman with his kid and he's teaching him the ropes of the sea and the land, that there's something missing. I don't know, maybe a mother figure. And she's nowhere to be found. And I understand why. I understand why Marvel took this route, obviously, with the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp situation playing out in court. I understand why DC did what they did here but the movie suffered because of it. Jason Momoa's on-screen chemistry with Amber Heard throughout this film is quite rough, to say the least. It doesn't feel warm. It doesn't feel like I want to hold her at night and cuddle up. It feels like she just took a dump on my bed and then blamed it on the dog. If you know, you know. <laughs> It, it's, that's that's just the facts, baby. So you see throughout the first act about how much Atlanteans hate the fishermen, which is just the land people. And throughout the first act, there is an obvious tension between Aquaman and the council, especially in reference to he is a half-breed. He is considered a half-breed. And you see him kind of grapple with not really wanting to be king, but also the responsibility of being king and what that means for his people and also maintaining the democracy set in Atlantis. So if the council does not want to reveal itself to the earthlings, to the, the surface dwellers, then he has to uphold that decision and stand by the council's decision, even though that's not something he would do himself. So the first chapter of the film, it drags a little bit. You see a montage of Aquaman with his son and Mira's not there. Obviously, it, it creates an awkward dynamic throughout the first chapter of the movie. Then we hop into chapter number two. This follows Black Manta. Obviously, Black Manta is the main villain that we see throughout the film. I felt like his part was a little bit sporadic, especially at first. He's looking for gear. He's kind of in limbo. He he knows what he wants to do. He wants to kill Aquaman, kill his family, avenge the death of his father. That much is clear. And that's all I felt like the movie really had to do. Display to us Black Manta's pain that he experienced in the first movie. That way we could clearly see the motive and the monster behind the motive. To me, they kind of went a different direction that I didn't feel necessary. He finds the Black Trident in the second chapter of the movie. King Kordax is his name. He is the former king of the Lost Kingdom, hence the name. He was developing this chemical warfare, if you will. It's called Auriculcum. Hope I pronounced that well. Yes, that is the spelling of it. It basically mass produces greenhouse gases and it speeds up global warming. So every bit of earth is constantly getting hotter. To me, it was just an unnecessary ad to put King Kordax in the movie. Not a lot of people really know King Kordax and I feel like Black Manta's entire personality didn't need this like X factor in the background just make Black Manta badass that's what we all like about we love his heat vision laser eyes we love his badass gear that he has on and he's just he's a genuine killer who hates Aquaman for all of his right reasons so as we deep dive into black manta we then turn around and we see aquaman is learning that black manta is essentially stealing these pockets of auriculum 
throughout Atlantis that were hidden in depositories after the battle for Atlantis by Keen Atlantis versus King Kordax. We get a brief description of what it did to his people, which is basically turned them into walking green-eyed zombies, including himself. As we pan back, we see Aquaman learning of all of this. To me, it was just kind of, it was an excuse to get Orm in the movie. It was an excuse to get Patrick Wilson in the movie. Who knows a villain better than another villain? It developed into kind of this awkward situation. Orm is locked in this prison in the desert, right? Of course, an Atlantean doesn't have any water and that makes him incredibly weak. I thought at first that that was a cool little device where they could have Jason Momoa go in, break him out, basically big brother giving little brother a nergi. They didn't do that though. It was this awkward monologue from Aquaman as they're just panning to like him sneaking in this prison. He had this like invisibility cloak that you would think is from Wakanda and he was able to just kind of like sneak his way past the guards with this giant octopus that could go on land and it was just it was a whole strange debacle and once he gets there they take off they get back to the water that's kind of where the second chapter of the movie or the second act picks up its pace a little bit after aquaman and orm get back into the water and they start discussing about what's next we then go to this manufacturing plant on this random island that manta and the scientists i spoke of earlier Dr. Steven is held up mass producing the greenhouse gas and it's not looking good for humanity like at all. So in this volcano which is so villainous of Black Manta, the mass producing all of this gas and that's also what runs old Atlantean ships that are built like octopuses so that they can extract more of the deposits throughout Atlantis. You get a description of kind of what the scientist Steven feels and and he just wants to see Atlantis. He wants to be the guy who discovers it, the first human ever to discover it. And he wants to be the guy who kind of brings them into the light and shares with the world what Atlantis is. And he's working with Black Manta, who accomplished these things, which seems counterproductive to me. But fast forward, we get Orm and Aquaman showing up to the island. They were able to track Black Manta to this island in a volcano, mass producing this devastating gas. Not only does it heat up the Earth's atmosphere, it also creates mutated animals. Why, might you ask? I don't know. <laughs> No, no, why? There's an entire ant colony that is about six and a half feet tall chasing after Orm and Aquaman on this island. Never once did it describe this gas as creating mutants. Never once did it describe this gas as making animals more aggressive to where they're eating a giant dead rat. Once again, all creative rights to James Wan. I'm just saying that fell a little out of place and kind of like a filler. I don't know why a gas that just heats up the planet would also create giant animals that become incredibly aggressive. I don't know. So to me, at this point in the movie, I was kind of like, please be over. But what I will say is I felt like Jason Momoa and Patrick Wilson's chemistry on screen was the saving grace of this movie. It was a breath of fresh air. It felt a lot like classic Thor and Loki. Aquaman was referring to how he beat his ass in the first movie, and Orm was describing to him about what he would do better this time. And throughout the movie, you kind of get a sense that Orm isn't as bad of a guy as he seemed in the first movie, which is the age-old trope of the villain's not really a villain, he is kind of misunderstood and was led astray by his own thoughts. And what kind of pictures this perfectly throughout the film is Aquaman turns to him after he says, why are you trying to protect Earth when all that matters is your own kind? And Aquaman turns to him and says, your biasness and your hatred leave you with so little to enjoy of life. And basically he's describing about how there's so many things on Earth that he enjoys in Aquaman's perspective, that is burger beer, bars, all sorts of B words. And he, he basically goes on to learn throughout this movie, and that's a really big quote, that there is more to life than, than hating something that you really don't know that much about. And on to the next.
<laughs> so in this movie, Black Manta becomes an eco-terrorist. An eco-terrorist, yep. He goes from hating Aquaman and wanting to kill his whole family to hating Aquaman, wanting to kill his whole family, including the son that hasn't been mentioned since the opening 10 minutes of the film, and also being down with destroying Earth and the seas and himself. Yeah, he just does not care it's because he admits like throughout the movie that he knows that this cordax guy would enslave him and that's cool that's cool he, he never references it again after that after the first time he mentions it he's just kind of like yeah it is what it is another thing that i didn't really like about this movie was the cgi the cgi was so sporadic in this film i don't even really know where to start with it first things first it would go from this beautiful bioluminescent seahorse that aquaman constantly rides around on to essentially the cgi used in thor love and thunder for that little kid's face it's just really twisted and it feels like so hot and cold that this movie doesn't really know what it wants to be one second you think you're watching james cameron's avatar and then the next second you feel like you're watching Spider-Man Lotus. It's just, it's really a, a wrench thrown in my day when I watched that. Like, where, where did the budget go? And it's so strange. So, like, usually when CGI is bad in the movie, the first half is good, and then the second half of the movie, you're like, okay, their budget kind of ran out. No, that's not what happened in this movie at all. There was random scenes towards the end of the movie that looked really clean and really good, and then there were scenes within the first five minutes to ten minutes of the movie that looked absolutely putrid, and it just went back and forth with each other there's this scene in the beginning of the movie where aquaman sees that his son can like talk to animals because they have this fish tank of course they have a fish tank set up in the lighthouse where he lives and his son is like hella communicating with fish but you just see like these random white circles coming out of his head and it doesn't look good it does it looks like these giant vape clouds that like a 15 year old was doing in a middle school bathroom it's just it's terrible but at the bottom bioluminescent seahorse is like awesome it's it's slick it's sharp it's clean aquaman the lost kingdom was a culmination of too little time too many stories that needed to be told and in doing so they lost the vision of it it felt empty, it felt hollow, and it felt misguided. Not to say that James Wan is a bad director. I felt like they knew that the end of the DCEU was coming, so they kind of gave up mid-production. And to me, you could clearly see that on screen. And you had great chemistry between Patrick Wilson and Jason. You had no chemistry between Amber Heard and Jason. James Wan had this beautiful shot of when Black Manta was coming to kidnap Aquaman's son where the house is completely dark. It's like the middle of the night. And you just see Black Manta's like red glowing eyes in the background. And to me, that's that's classic James Wan. That's almost something that he would do in the original Conjuring movie. But there wasn't enough of that in this film whatsoever. They didn't do enough to kind of keep this movie afloat. So the end credit scene at the end of this movie, it's not really worth it. It's Orm eating a booger for the first time. He puts a cockroach in it because he likes the way cockroaches taste. Aquaman and earlier in the movie tells him that cockroaches are super delicious so Orm tries one and likes it that's the end of the movie that's the end of the DCEU it's a cockroach in the cheeseburger big old bite so for me I'm going to give Aquaman The Lost Kingdom a 4 out of 10 sinking ship emoji it was like watching the Titanic crash the idea is beautiful the vision's there but the execution and the way that we got to where we got at the end wasn't good so that's my review on aquaman the lost kingdom let us know what you guys think in the comments remember to like and subscribe for more nerdy content just like this peace out guys see you in the next one